Antarctica is a land of extremes. It's the coldest place on Earth, with average temperatures hovering around negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. There are no trees or terrestrial animals of any kind to be found. But don't let that scare you away. There are plenty of things to do in Antarctica that don't involve freezing your butt off. With its dramatic scenery and its rich diversity of wildlife, this icy continent is home to some of the most astonishing sights on Earth. From towering mountains to bubbling vents on the seafloor, from penguins to whales and seals, you're gonna find it all here. In this video, we'll smash the ice to reveal the 12 best places to visit in Antarctica. Travel Goals brings you the best in travel destinations, travel tips, and accommodations around the world. Before we dive into today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so, and ring the bell to be notified about our newest videos. Now, without any further ado, let the snow show begin! Number 12. Snow Hill Island Snow Hill Island is a place that certainly lives up to its name. It lies in the remote Weddell Sea, east of the Antarctic Peninsula, and it's almost completely covered in snow. The island is about 10 kilometers, or 6.2 miles, by 30 kilometers, or 18.6 miles in size, and the highest point on the island is just over 300 meters. Just a few years ago, just south of Snow Hill Island, a colony of emperor penguins was discovered. The colony is often inaccessible due to a thick pack of ice, but some adventurous penguins roam the many ice flows in the area. Other wildlife such as killer whales, humpback and fin whales, leopard seals, crab eaters, and weddell seals often make an appearance as well. Number 11. The Ross Sea A hidden gem of the Antarctic tourist trail, the Ross Sea remains as mystical as ever, welcoming only a lucky few to its frozen shores every year. What you're gonna see, the spectacular stunning subarctic islands, which only receive a handful of visitors every year. Cruise the coastline in zodiacs, on reaching the Ross Sea. Put on your boots each day to explore the coastline, including Ross Island itself with its imposing volcano, Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is an active volcano, the second highest in Antarctica, and the southernmost active volcano on Earth. With a summit elevation of 3,794 meters, or 12,448 feet, it's located in the Ross Dependency on Ross Island, which is also home to three inactive volcanoes, Mount Terror, Mount Bird, and Mount Terranova. You can also visit the Ross Ice Shelf. The Ross Ice Shelf is the largest ice shelf on Earth. The current estimate of its area is about 182,000 square miles, or 472,000 square kilometers. It's roughly the same size as France. It's several hundred meters thick. The nearly vertical ice front to the open sea is more than 600 kilometers long, between 15 and 50 meters high above the water surface. 90% of the floating ice, however, is below the water surface. Are you adequately fortunate enough to journey along the biggest ice rack in Antarctica? Well, you could get treated to a unique regular event. Lumps of the Ross Ice Shelf split away from the larger mass with relative consistency. This interaction is known as calving, and it's quite a sight to see. The biggest realized ice lump to calve from the Ross Ice Shelf in Antarctica covered 12,000 square miles, making it bigger than the nation of Belgium. When conditions permit, you can land on the Ross Ice Shelf by helicopter. Number 10. Deception Island Deception Island is a volcanic island located in the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica in the Southern Ocean. It lies south of Greenwich Island, north to northwest of Livingston Island, and northeast of Cape Smith. Deception Island is one of many islands that make up the South Shetland Islands archipelago. The island has been used for sealing before humans settled on it permanently in 1820, creating a whaling station there by 1822. The British flag was raised over Deception Island on January 2nd of 1823, making it the first permanent settlement south of the Antarctic Circle and eastwards from Cape Horn. In addition to being an excellent place to see penguins and seals, Deception Island also offers some spectacular scenery with its hot springs and shipwrecks, including two during World War II. There's also opportunities for camping and kayak and mountaineering available here as well. And you can also scuba dive among ice cliffs or even climbing them during winter when they become frozen solid. Number 9. The Dry Valleys The Dry Valleys are the largest ice-free area in Antarctica. The region is located on the peninsula and it's bordered by glaciers. The lack of snow and ice here is due to catabetic winds, which can blow from high elevations down to low elevations. 
carrying with them ice particles that fall as precipitation in other areas of the continent. The dry valleys can be reached via a plane ride from Ushuaia in Argentina or Punta Arenas in Chile. A stay at Argentina's Esperanza Station or Chile's Via Las Estrellas allows you to explore this unique region while also providing access to some animal life that has survived in this harsh environment. Penguins, squats, birds related to goats, chinstrap penguins, fur seal, albatrosses, and petrels. This region also offers opportunity for hiking and trekking along with the glaciers, hiking up Mount Hope, climbing Devil's Finger Peak, kayaking around Lake Rixel, wildlife viewing at Lake Hore, walking along moraines near McMurodo Sound, visiting Scott Base, visiting the memorial cairn built for Captain Robert Falcon Scott's ill-fated expedition, all just a few hours' drives away from Ushuaia or Punto Arenas. Number 8. Neko Harbor Neko Harbor is a small bay in the larger Andvord Bay on the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula. This sheltered bay offers natural protection for various animal species against the elements and natural enemies. This makes it an excellent region for many seabirds and penguins and other sea creatures. With a bit of luck, you can also spot some various whale species here. In Neko Harbor, which is in fact not a harbor but a bay, there's also a lot of wildlife to spot. Many Gentoo penguins also reside on the banks, but also other sea creatures such as Weddell seals and fur seals. Various species of whales also visit regularly. The glacier that opens into the bay regularly causes quite a stir. Almost continuously smaller and sometimes larger pieces of ice plunge violently into the water of the bay and can cause some pretty significant tidal waves. When visiting the bay, one should always be aware of this, because within a minute, the sometimes big waves can already reach the landing point of the bay and, especially if a large mass of ice has just been poured into the water, it's going to wipe everything away. Number 7. Peterman Island Peterman Island is located at the northern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula. This island, about 11 kilometers long and 4 kilometers wide, is separated from Anvers Island by the narrow Peterman Channel. It's an important breeding ground for penguins and other seabirds as well as seals. The island also hosts a few scientific bases, including Germany's Neumayer Station 3 at its southern tip. This spot is best suited for travelers who want to experience pristine nature in one of Earth's last remaining untouched regions. It's not for those who are looking for a bustling tourist destination with all of comforts close to hand. Number 6. Andvord Bay Andvord Bay is a great place of importance for penguin colonies. It's located at the northern end of the Antarctic Peninsula, and it offers a spectacular view of the mountains surrounding the Andvord Bay. It's one of the most popular places to visit in Antarctica because it has beautiful scenery that offers so many possibilities for excursions on land or at sea. There's also plenty of options to choose from when it comes to accommodation, ranging from simple tents to luxurious hotels built by cruise ships that arrive each year during the summer season, which is November through March. Number 5. Foyne Harbor Foyne Harbor is a large bay in the western part of Graham Island, which is one of many sub-regions of the Antarctic Peninsula. Located between King George Island and the mainland, it was named after Svend Voin, a Norwegian polar explorer and a whaling captain. Foyne Harbor is home to several islands, including Bird Island, which has been designated as a nature preserve. The other islands include Night Inlet and Nani Island, also known as Garda Isla. The bay itself is an important breeding area for Gentoo penguins during their annual molt period from December through February every year. In fact, this particular location boasts of being one of the largest concentrations of penguins on Earth, with over 200,000 individuals residing here at any given time. Number 4. Antarctica Sound The Antarctic Sound is a body of water that's about 30 nautical miles connecting the Joinville Island and the Trinity Peninsula. It was named after John Balleny, who was a whaler who visited it in 1839. The Sound was explored by British and American expeditions between 1838 and 1840. The Antarctic Sound is a popular cruising area, with frequent sightings of whales and penguins. It also offers some of the best opportunities for sightseeing on land as well as at sea if you wanted to. Number 3. Paradise Bay Paradise Bay is a bay on the Antarctic Peninsula's west coast. Known for its icebergs and various species of penguins, it can be accessed from the nearby Argentinian base Morambio by boat ride. The exploration of Paradise Bay is not done on foot, but by zodiacs. The area is extremely scenic, with hundreds of glaciers terminating spectacular waterfalls and calving pieces into this bay that's been described as, quote-unquote, one of Antarctica's most beautiful spots. 
In addition to enjoying these majestic sights, visitors have also had an opportunity to see Gentoo, Megayanic, and Adeli penguins here. And if they're lucky, or persistent I suppose, they could even spot orcas or humpback whales. And number two, we got Half Moon Island. Half Moon Island is an island off the coast of Antarctica, located between the Marambio and Margarit Bay peninsulas. It's an ideal place for penguin watching as well as other bird species like kelp gulls, south polar squats, Antarctic terns, and snowy sheathbills. Humpback whales also are known to appear in Half Moon Bay during their migration season in the summer months, which is from September to December. <laughs> Half Moon Island is a very popular location for cruise ship tourists looking for some spectacular scenery without getting their feet wet. The island is only accessible by boat. There is a small Chilean settlement on this island which consists of one building that serves as both home and a post office. Visitors won't find any accommodation here, so plan ahead if you want to spend more than just a day exploring this beautiful area. Number 1. Le Maire Channel One of the most popular destinations in Antarctica is the Le Maire Channel which has been named a World Heritage Site. The channel is located between Deception Island and Livingston Island, two of the many islands that make up Antarctica. The Meyer Channel is famous for its beautiful landscapes and wildlife, including penguins and seals. The waters are also home to many whales that migrate there during the summer months. The difficulty of navigating this part of Antarctica might turn some travelers away, but hey, it's worth it. Along with being one of the only ways to get into this region by boat, Le Maire Channel offers some amazing views as well as unique opportunities for tourists to see wildlife up close. You'll find yourself surrounded by icebergs floating through an icy blue sea dotted with seals swimming above you or resting on ice floes beneath your boat. But don't worry, they won't attack. Many tours are going to stop at nearby islands, so you can explore them on foot before continuing on your journey into Le Maire Channel, where even more surprises await. Seeing these cool places is, honestly, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And here we've reached the end of our list. So, what are your thoughts on these beautiful places in Antarctica? Do share them with us in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon for more videos exactly like this one. Well, not quite exactly, but uh, anyways, we'll see you in the next one. Later.